Hello friends, in this video we're going to be discussing .NET Conference, which is going to be on November 12th to November 14th. We're going to be discussing some of the new features coming in ASP.NET Core 9, as well as Entity Framework. So let's get started. So as we can see here, this is the main landing page for .NET Conf. As we can see here, it's going to be from November 12th until November 14th. If we go a bit down, we can see these are going to be the main featured speaking, David, Safia, Scott, etc, etc. It's going to be a very impactful and full event where we're going to be introduced to .NET 9 and obviously new wonderful features. If you want to get ahead of it, let's check the agenda that they're going to be having. So as we can see here, there's going to be some keynotes. .NET Aspire is going to be one of the main key features because it has a lot of new updates within the last year and it's going to be basically have a lot of new functionalities being brought forward to us within .NET 9. I'll make a full video about .NET Aspire and .NET 9 once it's released. If you're interested in this, please make sure you put them in the comments down below. As well, we're going to be seeing what's new in the uh, C Sharp 13, ASP.NET Core and Blazor within .NET 9, .NET MAUI as well. If we take a look down, we're going to be taking a look at some of the built-in AI application that we can actually do within .NET 9 as well. That doesn't mean that we can't do them from now, but we're going to be seeing how this .NET 9 will be able to leverage them. Open AI, uh, API with .NET 9, specifically now with Swagger, is going to be out of support. And see if there's anything other interesting. Azure function and Azure within for .NET Aspire, that's going to be really interesting. As well, API Center, how we can manage our APIs with API Center, that's going to be really interesting as well to watch. On top of that, there's going to be other different features and new functionalities, which is going to be really interesting to watch. I highly suggest you go through this page and basically bookmark any event that you like to watch and make sure you attend it. So now that we have covered a bit of the agenda, let's see what's going to be coming in you within .NET 9 and specific in ASP.NET. So ASP.NET 9 is going to provide a lot of new functionalities when it comes to ASP.NET. So in .NET 9, there's going to be a lot of new features and functionalities specifically for ASP.NET Core. Blazor is going to be the taking the center stage where within Blazor, there's going to be introduction to Blazor Hybrid as well as Web App Solutions. And this is going to be really interesting because it's going to integrate with MAUI and you're going to be able to create a Blazor application within MAUI. On top of that, there's going to be also simplification of authentication and serialization within Blazor. Right now, the authentication process within the Blazor is a bit ad hoc, I would say, but hopefully within the simplification, it will have a, like a specific pattern that we can actually follow. Let's scroll a bit down. A lot of different enhancement. Constructor injection is really an appreciated in, uh, addition. As well, if we go a bit down, let's see what other items in Blazor. There's going to be an introduction to sing uh, Signal R, and those enhancements within Signal R, we're going to be seeing the capability to have automatic reconnection, which is something that we have been waiting for for a while when it comes to implementing Signal R. As well, we're going to be seeing WebSocket compressions, and this WebSocket compression will allow us to basically downsize or basically minimize the size of the message that we're going to be sending. On top of that, uh, within Signal R, there's going to be support for native AOT, which is a stand for ahead of time compilation. And this will allow our signal application to be really, really small and have to be very much optimized. And it will be very performant because it doesn't really need to do any compilation because the compilation has already been done. As well, we can see there's going to be some also some limitations coming in with because of the introduction of AOT, but we'll get delve into into details. Uh, if you have any questions or any clarification or would like me to cover this, please make sure you put them in the comments down below. There's going to be some enhancements to minimal API. And within minimal APIs, there's going to be introduction to grouping where we're going to be able to call produce problems and produce validation on root groups, which is going to be really good. As well, there's going to be enhancement on open API support for minimal API. On top of that, because Swagger is going to be out of the picture within .NET Night, Open API is going to take the main center stage to replace that. So we can see here that within .NET 9, Open API is going to be by default directly supported within .NET 9. So once we create a new web API within .NET 9, either it's going to be a controller based or minimal APIs, we're going to have the capabilities to have add Open APIs directly there and we can actually directly bend them into our and as we can see here we are able to see the open api spec directly being generated for us 
once we have created our new.NET Night Web API. That doesn't mean that we cannot add Swagger to it. We can add it, but this is another way where Microsoft gives you the capabilities to have open APIs back inside your applications. And on top of that, there's a lot of other functionalities that's coming in. It's not as big as the other rest of them, but also there's gonna be a lot of new enhancement. There's also a new type of a project which is going to be web api aot which is going to be a web api which has ahead of time compilation baked in into it and it's going to give us the capabilities to have a very fast and very performant web api so this is the main items here that i wanted to cover within the dotnet 9 asp.net now let's see what's the, some of the new enhancement coming within entity framework core 9. from within the dotnet entity framework core 9 we're going to be seeing a lot of new enhancements specifically around cosmos db and nosql where ef9 is basically has a lot of new enhancements and a lot of new performance enhancement for cosmos cosmos db and non-sql databases we're enhancing the querying the partitioning etc etc as well now there's going to be support for hierarchical partition keys and how this is going to play a crucial role in building a scalable Cosmos DB database. As well, there's gonna be enhancement to link querying capabilities, and there's gonna be improved modeling for Azure Cosmos DB and JSON standards. On top of that, there's gonna be vector similarity uh, search, and this is gonna be really, really crucial for any types of machine learning and machine learning databases. RBAC, it's gonna be really important because within Cosmos DB, we're gonna have, you're gonna now able to do uh, calls based on RBAC. RBAC stands for role-based access uh, control, and this allows you to basically have much more control, grain control on what actions you can do against your Cosmos DB. As well, you're gonna have now uh, synchronous input output block by default where you have to override this in order for you to enable it as well aot the other main new enhancement is going to be regarding link and sql translation where basically the translation from a link query to sql is going to be updated where you're going to be able to see a much more general query and if you scroll up and down this is all minor enhancements the last one I would like to mention, let's try to find it, which is going to be this one here, improved translation of logical negation operator. This will bring a performance optimization to the queries that use this negation operator, which is, I would imagine, being widely used in the community, which is a very welcome update. This video has just been a very quick overview and a quick reminder that .NET 9 is going to be around the corner. There's going to be a big .NET conference, which is going to last for a couple of days, where all of these features that are going to be discussed and they're going to be released. I hope this video was helpful. If you'd like me to cover any of these topics that we have went through today, please make sure you put them in the comments down below. If there is anything in particular that you are interested in within .NET 9, please also let me in the comments down below. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.